had a wonderful education in Los Angeles, Los Angeles City Schools. And along the way, there were a number of things that happened that opened up some interesting doors for me, and specifically leading in the direction of textiles. Most importantly, I think, is the sense of working with our teachers who loved to change environments. Um, whether it be for a dance in the junior high school or the Christmas decorations or whatever. I love doing those kinds of things. And especially when there was opportunity to go into the theater and to go with the head of the art department to one of the costume design companies in Hollywood and walk among tons of fabric and regard that as a palette just was extraordinary for me. You know, there was never a point anywhere along the way where all of a sudden there was an aha moment. Uh, my life has really been an accumulation. I mean, I think that's the best way to describe it. And when I began to take courses, especially in textiles, there was a kind of relationship with the medium, and I think it's because of the theater thing that happened before. And that linkage was exciting. The next thing that was exciting is that I loved my teachers. I loved the people that could communicate, get me excited about working, and that really shepherded me into what ultimately became my profession, which was teaching. I taught high school at Westchester High School for six years, and the first semester that I was there, I attended a music performance in the auditorium, and the, everything was spectacular, except the visuals were pitiful. And I thought, perhaps I'll volunteer, which is what I did, and designed over the next six years about 35 or 40 productions. It was wonderful. You know, one cannot approach a backdrop in the theater that's 45 feet wide and 22 feet high without learning either you are the master of it or it is the master of you. As the work has evolved over the years, it's kind of gone through many different stages. Years ago, it was, of course, the area of architecture where I had wonderful opportunities to really explore in that direction and to really use public spaces in relationship to the theater as I had thought about it and to bring some new language into those uh, kinds of environments. Now what happened in time was I did a number of these projects in various parts of the country, did exhibition works that were of very large scale, big installation works, and there was a point where my interest in exploring this as an art experience seemed to become more commercially oriented. So at that point I thought, ah, why don't I pull back into another territory? That led me into the area of weaving. And so it has gone. I mean, I have gone through a number of these changes along the way. And currently what I'm doing is again, a new chapter. And where does it come from? Basically, it comes about in terms of realizing that there is a space for something because it doesn't exist. I've seen a lot. I think I know a lot, especially about the, the field of textiles. But what I'm making, I haven't seen before, and that's very worth doing. There is no question that the best part of working at Cranbrook Academy of Art was the opportunity of engaging with both students and my colleagues. The faculty is comprised of 10 artists in residence. I was one of 10. And uh, each of them were experts in their own field. Uh, the students at Cranbrook were extraordinary. Uh, for many years, I had the opportunity to work with many of the most outstanding graduate students in the country, and I've never regretted a single moment of it. You know, years ago, I always involved other people in my work, mainly because the large commission work was so demanding in terms of uh, a skill and, and making, I mean, we had, oftentimes I'd have 15 of my graduate students here working in the studio. Um, it was a real pleasure for me to share that experience with them. But I always kept other work that was 
private, work that was my own. In the last number of years, and especially after I left Cranbrook, and maybe this has a lot to do with changes in the art world, I am really suspicious about so many young artists uh, outsourcing their work. Um, we're getting to the point where we don't even ask the question about the making. And I feel strongly about the making. And what I like most about it is that I can claim ownership of those works. They're not shared experience. They're not collab collaborative works. I'm in touch with every decision that's made along the way. Success is always relative. One never is sure that what one is doing is going to be successful. We all live with our fingers crossed as we make things. But the interesting thing in art is that it's a byproduct of intention. Great art happens as a byproduct of technical skills and focus and life experience. And in the end, when all these conditions come together, perhaps it sets the stage for a wonderful performance. Asking questions in the process of making art may be more important than offering answers. So the question, what if, is really important. What if this, what if that? What if it's this way, what if it's that way? What if it's different than the last way that you approached it? What can I say about this time in my career? Ah, uh, many people are dead at this age. I'm very happy to be a survivor. Not only that, I'm extremely excited by the possibility of keeping these questions out in front of myself in such a way that not only interests me, but seems to interest other people. And so what could be better in life experience than that? So every day it's a pleasure to come to the studio, to open the door, to get back to work. Many days I don't turn on the radio, I do no, no distraction, I eat my carrot and my half apple for lunch. It's here, the life is here. Of course I want the work to go out into the world, but this is fabulous. I can't think of anything better. My name is Gerhard Nodell, and I have always aspired to make art. <laughs>